Good morning, millennials. Wow, it caught me right at the end of a yawn as we were three, two, one. -ing. You could have yawned right into it. No. Do you think? Do you think that yawns are um, like a social construct? Well, they are contagious via social construct. So I had, for one of my SAT sections, a reading section all about yawning, which was actually cruel. And what it said was like, even the word yawn can make a person yawn. Like I'm feeling like I should yawn right now. You know, like I could the, yawn, look. It's like the word lice can make your head itchy. <sighs> Just talking about yawning can actually make you yawn. The word lice can make your head itchy. No, it can't. <laughs> um, good morning. Happy Friday. Good morning, everyone. It's like it's, 60 degrees in New York. And if you're here because you saw us on Access Hollywood last night, welcome oh, to the yeah. show. Maybe we have some new listeners who are trying to keep, keep themselves in tune with what's necessary because our segment finally aired on Access Hollywood last night after much trial and tribulation. And it was worth the wait. What a flattering piece. It was so cute and fun. And the lighting was just like, mm. It was really great. And like, while I didn't love how I look, I didn't even care. And even though they were using so many fat photos of us, I still didn't care. No, I liked the way that I looked, but it really put a spotlight on how much I talk with my hands. No, but also they put footage from our first episode to like the episode that they were filming with Nick Vile and the amount that the show has changed and that we've changed is I, I could have done without the footage from the first episode. You know, that wasn't my greatest day. No, our it, set wasn't really there yet. It's... It's humbling, you know, and it's good to know where you come from. We're coming up on the one-year anniversary of the toast. Whoop. Let's not forget, you know, that first rough day because yeah. that's made this success even sweeter. Well, speaking of rough days, Jackie and I wanted to send our love to our New Zealand toasters. What a literally a horrible day in New Zealand, and I feel like days in New Zealand are always like lit and warm. Right, and it was last night when it came, like last happened night, here, yes, but it the was time difference today when it happened. There, a horrible was, terrorist attack. A horrible, horrible story. And to make it worse, it was all live streamed, and I just I can't live. You saw the footage. It was going viral on Twitter, and I didn't know what happened. I was just scrolling on my phone before bed, and it looked like a video game. And I started to watch it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I turned it off, and I got like a huge pit in my stomach. And then I looked at the hashtag. And I read a bunch of tweets about what was going on, but the time difference, like news was coming out slowly. Yeah. And I literally couldn't sleep all night and I was just like up with Ben talking because I couldn't get the picture out of my mind. It looks like a video game because I don't, I don't, nobody should watch it and I don't even want to draw attention to it because it's literally the most horrible thing ever, but it's like so inhumane and vile. And I accidentally watched it and then I told everyone in the chat, I'm like, don't watch it if you see it because I fell into the trap. Well, I'm sorry that you saw it. I'm sorry that it happened. I'm sorry to the whole it's horrible. community oh my God. of Christchurch. It's horrible. It's also Ugh. confusing because it's called Christchurch, but it was in a mosque. Right. So I thought I it was in a the, church think, at first. I think the town, the town is, is called, called Christchurch. Christ church. Yeah. Cute. Yeah, cute name. Very sad. And I think 49 people have been confirmed dead so far, 20 injured, which are definitely... But the like, shooter's still alive. Really? Yes, and I have an idea for him. Oh, I say we live stream him. And we all get to like stab him or something. You love thinking about how you would punish. It's like the only thing that makes me feel better in these situations is like getting revenge. But I think what's so sad is like you can think about all of the different situations and like nothing will ever bring justice totally. to the victims, to their families, no matter how much you inflict pain on the person. Like it's, you know, the damage is done. Totally. And it's really sad. So our thoughts are with everyone this morning in New Zealand. So not a great way to start the day, but besides that, We'll deliver the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. You know, I was watching Access Hollywood last night, and I was, like, really impressed with their segues. And I do think as hosts, that is one thing we could work on. We could work on, but I think we do a pretty good job. And, and also, when we don't do a good job, we're the first to call ourselves out. Yeah. Or, like, if you do it in a really abrupt way, like, sometimes it's funny. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or sometimes it's like, that's what the news does. They tell the story. They don't always work on their segues. They just, you know, transition to a new lens. So, like, I'll do one lens. Right. Here are the past five stories. Oh, yeah, Good yeah. Good morning, millennials. Like, sometimes they don't even have to say anything. It's just a quick head tilt to the next right. camera. It's like we've all decided we're moving on from this. Got it. I learned a lot from our access piece last night, Much like, mostly that it like the, a big turtleneck. While it, you think it's a cute look, like you... No, I thought you, you looked cute. I guess. I kind of looked like I had, like, a neck injury. Well, I thought it was really And just... I thought they used cute bites from us. Like, when I seen the text of me, she was laughing that I said I was standards in HR. Totally. And that's so true. And, and I like don't even remember what I watched because, like, I was just so excited. I ran out of dinner. Like, literally ran down the block. Couldn't be more excited. Ben was, like, literally still paying the check. I was like, I'll meet you at home. And um, I made it just in time. 
Really funny. I guess it's part of their new uh, segment of girl boss content creators. And I'm really excited. I think we might have been the first people. I'm excited to see who is featured among us. Do you see who is coming on next week? No. Your doppelganger, that YouTube little girl who does ASMR. Shut up. How funny is we that? We have to get her on the show. I know. I love her. I've subscribed to her. I subscribe to her too because I want to support her. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of ASMR. So me neither. The videos aren't for me, but I love when she goes viral with her little memes of being a flight attendant. She's so funny. You really actually look a lot like her. No, it's like when I have a family, it's going to be her, Noah Ritter, as like my kids. Yep. And then maybe I'll get like a random blonde Mason Ramsey. Like, what happened to Noah Ritter? I don't know. I hope he's just like in school getting his education in a legal way. And then he'll pop back up when the time has come. Yeah. Because it's hard to start so young. Not everyone can be Mason Ramsey with you know like a I social th- media team that is fucking savage. Totally. You know? you know what I thought of today? You know that clip that like has been viral on Twitter for like years? I'm the queen and you're the sorry people. That kid who's like that lady comes to clean out his fridge. Yes. Where is he now? Oprah should do like a, a, an update. Where? Ellen should do an update when she brings all these kids on her show. Like where are they now? Yeah, but Oprah does like a where are they now thing. Right, but with people on her show. Also, I like Oprah better than Ellen, so. I totally agree. Okay, fine. But like, and I think Oprah would be kind of. These kids are definitely in contract with Ellen. On Ellen TV. Yeah. Um, also, major life update. I want to tell everyone I got my second ear pierced. My second Excuse hole. Excuse me? I got my second hole parsed. Thank you. Um, and I'm not going to lie. Everyone's like, did it hurt? Did it hurt? It did not hurt for a second. Like, it was really the most painless thing. And everyone was like, you're not going to be able to sleep. It hurts. I literally have forgotten about it. Until right now, I just got, like, a little bit of a sting, which reminded me that I got my ear pierced. And maybe my ear just wanted me to talk about it. Okay. Well, I don't do know I why you like keep saying you got your ear pierced. Sorry, I got because my ear parsed. Because it's really hard, hurting my feelings. Do, do I get, like, And um, it's like you're turning your back on your roots. Do I look like I'm about to rob a bank or something? No, honestly. I feel like fucking Joan do, Jett. Do you? Yeah. Did I it hurt because you're the most dramatic bitch on the planet? I'm the most dramatic bitch on the planet. It didn't hurt at all. And now I want to get another one. But I was going to get two last night, but apparently you can only get one at a time for like safety reasons. Fair. Could you get? Could you have gotten your belly button? Did you inquire? Yes, I did. And Margot Lewin, who works at the Alice and Lou store where it was, I was like, I'm going to get my tongue pierced. She's like, no, you're not. Do they do that? Yes. I asked. I'm like, if I wanted to come in here and get like my clit pierced, like, could I? She's like, yeah. I hope they have different machines. And it was the same guy <laughs> who live pierced, parsed Jackie's ears on the morning breath last year. It was the same guy. But I don't think he remembered me because like I wasn't the one getting pierced, parsed. Maybe he would remember this, these years. Um, anyways, back to access because I just can't stop talking about okay. it. I just wanted to mention that I can't believe Theo was on TV. Jackie. I same. couldn't breathe. Same. It's like whoever edited that clip like was definitely a toaster. Was in tune with what's necessary. Like... Has Theo been impossible all day, like, ever since his big break? Um, yeah, I mean, he got back from his walk, like, covered in mud, and it was just, like, when he does that and I'm, like, getting ready to leave, I just don't have time to, like, take care of him, do you know? Right. But like, it's like threw he, him in the tub. But he's a big star now, so he, that's not his problem. That's true. You know? Yeah. And then also Nick Vile made it on tour segment. Totally. Have you heard from him? I have not, but someone should share the clip with him because it's just so flattering and cute. And we, our little baskets made it too. Oh my God. That is so cute. I love our baskets. So he's also, while Nick Vile was here, he told me something that really shook me to the core. And I think it's going to shake you as well because I was talking about his essential oils, which I truly have been loving. He was saying he's coming out with diffusers of the essential oils material. So I was like, cool, you know. Material? Y- you know what I mean. A Liquid, descent, yeah. You can diffuse the essential oils. Oh, that's like, cool. Sounds cool. I always like a good smell. And he was like, most people use candles. I was like, I love candles. I have the biggest candles, the prettiest candles, the smelliest candles. And he was like, but what you don't realize is you're literally inhaling not only smoke, like when you're just laying in bed and the candle's going, you're inhaling smoke, but like it's like perfumed chemical smoke. And it just really got me thinking about like scents and the chemicals in them that we ingest. And now, That's like, a good point. You know? So now every time you put on, like, a perfume, do you feel like maybe it's not good? Well, sometimes, but it just, it will depend on the situation. I don't always inhale my perfume, but it could be great to go the organic perfume route. Well, even if you spritz on perfume every day, here's something you might not think about. What's actually in it. That's why we're so excited about Fleur. They make stunning, non-toxic perfumes and list all their ingredients online. You get a good scent with clean ingredients, and the sample process is just plain fun. For luxurious perfume that's all good, clean fun, try Fleur. P-H-L-U-R. Go to Fleur.com today, use promo code TOAST to get 20% off your first custom Fleur sample set. Pick three cents to try, get credit towards a full-size bottle of your favorite one. That's promo code TOAST at Fleur.com to get your first three Fleur fragrances samples at 20% off. Fleur. P-H-L-U-R.com. Code TOAST. 
That's great. And you know, if Courtney Kardashian's watching, like that's a great product no, for her. No, I actually heard about it from her. I mean, it's always nice to like just be a little organic sometimes. Um, I feel as if I'm organic in my in my sense of humor. <laughs> Speaking of organic senses of humor, I have a tickets up. I have a sh ugh, I have a show at Foxwoods this weekend. I'm not even shelling for tickets because you bitches sold that shit out. So there's a couple individual seats left. But they consider that a sellout in my biz because like no one's gonna buy a ticket like if they're a group of people and get like three separate tickets. So um, Jackie's coming. I'm coming. We're making it a party. Yeah, it's a Steeny Vibes occasion. Well, they were extremely generous, Foxwoods. Just like asked me how many rooms I needed, and I just randomly said excuse me, six, even though I know like four people. So I'm just inviting ever invited everyone at the parsing party. I'm just inviting people. You need a room? You let me know. I'll take care of it. I'm excited. Me too. I've never been to Foxwoods. I've never been to Foxwoods too. Well, you want to hear something so funny? So I invited your friend Margo. And she's like, okay, I'm going to come. I've never been to AC before. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I don't know how to tell you this. It's not in Atlantic <laughs> City. But I just thought it was because it's like a casino near New York, you know? It's a, Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's like if you just went to the Borgata, like there's nothing else. Right, you don't leave the resort. So, same thing. Good. But it's, it's like weirdly in Connecticut. Like we're just gonna be like ladies with our pearls. Step first. I'm gonna have to take out my second earring. You can't wear two earrings in Connecticut. You can wear two earrings at Foxwoods. Oh, true. As true, long as true. you don't get out of the car before Foxwoods, right. you're fine. Yeah, like if we do a pit stop, it's gotta be in New Jersey or something. That's so funny. Um, okay, well I feel pretty caught up. Anything else happen? We're gonna do Dear Toasters at the end of the show. Yes, we are. Um, I feel pretty caught up on my personal life. Anything you wanna share with the group? Oh, uh, regarding my personal life? No, I'm pretty good. You know, just out here. Working, chugging along. Chugging. I don't know, like I worked We're in a out blazer. yesterday, I'm so sore. Oh, big mistake. Big mistake, huge, still looking for an apartment. Just, you know, an exciting time. There's also so much news today that I really felt like um, overwhelmed. So I'd mm. like to hop to it. If you don't feel overwhelmed and you don't feel underwhelmed, can you ever just feel whelmed? Here are the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> First story, the iHeartRadio Music Awards were on last night on a Thursday night, which is really weird. And what's even weirder is they pulled the biggest names in the music industry, notably Taylor Swift. And I have a lot and of thoughts. And Ariana Grande, even though she didn't show up, neither did Cardi B. But they made it seem like all these people were going to be there. But then at the end of the day, no one was there. Except Taylor Swift was there, which is like bigger than anything. I have a lot of thoughts about the iHeartRadio Music Awards airing on a Thursday in general. Okay, because I have to say, like, I love them. I, re I enjoyed them too. And I think the artists really enjoy them because like it's not the Grammy so it's like you can literally tell you know the person at iHeart like you, you have so much control. It's yeah, like, and don't put the camera on me now. Yep. I don't want to stay through the whole show. I would like I want to talk award. about mentioned. I would like my my uh, initiatives in Africa mentioned. Like you can you can shill your own products. And I would stuff. like this award. Yeah. I'm working with this sponsor. I would like Taco Bell to pay me. I think if you agree to go and you're a big name, they'll pretty much give you whatever you want, which is how it's remained successful. They also were like one of the only shows that like really, um, I don't know, like gives into the millennials. Not even the millennials, the Gen Zers, you know? Like there were so many people there, like I literally had no idea who they were. Like Lauv. Yeah, because it's, oh, I know Lauv. I don't. Lauv. Um, because it's interesting, but then at the end of the day, it's like they control the radio. So the big artists do want to play right. with them because I want my songs and on the radio. And if you're in bed, if you have a good relationship with iHeartRadio, like... Your songs, good or bad, totally. play on the radio. That's true. That's true. No, I was actually really surprised because I'm always making fun of iHeartRadio. They have like fake podcasts and like everything they do is fake. They're like... They're, they, didn't they declare bankruptcy as a, as a company, yes. iHeartMedia? But they literally had a billion dollar award show. Like, I don't get the company whatsoever. But I happen to have really liked and enjoyed the show because it wasn't that serious. I loved T-Pain. I love T Pain as well, and he won the Mass Singer, which like really swept. I didn't even know the that. world. I everyone was talking about it, and like all of the who the people were were like so concealed. Even when they revealed themselves, it's like anytime I got a news alert, they wouldn't put it in the headline because it was like so like protected. Spoil, protected. Um, and I, I just think it's like I didn't watch Mass Singer, but I enjoyed that other people enjoyed it. You know? Yeah. No, I just thought T Pain like didn't take himself too seriously. Like he was being really funny. Um, I loved I love the Alicia Keys of it all. I love how she's like coming back. I love how she doesn't wear makeup anywhere or do her hair. Like, I just love her. But then she was wearing like a glittery eyeshadow and it wasn't even like a, in a makeup way. I don't it think was it was. In, it was in like a fashion way. It was like a decorative. Yeah, I don't think it was glittery eyeshadow. I think it was like moisturizer. No, she was wearing silver eyeshadow when she was playing at the piano. But it's like. She was? Yeah, but it, she also wasn't wearing skin makeup. Like, I think her point about not wearing makeup is like, we don't have to like pretend to be, be like, someone else. Be someone else or be more or less beautiful than we, can just than we are. Like, we're beautiful the way that we are. But like, if I want to wear like silver eyeshadow because it matches my dress, like that's not conflicting with her message. It's an accessory. Yes. Totally. It's like wearing a pair of earrings. Totally. That's a good point. Well, I just loved her relationship with Taylor, like the three amigos, her, Marin, and Taylor. And in her speech, she gave Taylor and Marin two shout outs. Yeah. And also like the only like 
people who showed up to the show. Were Taylor Marin and right. um, And I also Alicia. used to work at iHeartRadio, so I can confirm that a lot of what they do is fake, but a lot of what they do is good and fun and cute. Oh my god, I totally forgot you used to work there. Right. I once did the Jingle Ball. Did you ever, like, um, sign anything? What do you mean? Like an NDA? No. So like, you can tell us everything? I could tell you whatever you wanted to know. But I don't feel like you weren't privy to really, you know, good information. Top level information. Yeah. No, and like I worked on like social stuff, so that's always fun. And they have good social media presence, and their Snapchat channel is always like cute when I used to watch it. So, I mean, yeah. And they do a good festival show, but it is like pretty fake. And then they bring everyone from The Bachelor, and it's like Hannah G all of a sudden gets as many cameras as Taylor Swift. Totally, she was sitting two rows behind Taylor Swift. I know, but honestly, she deserves it. And she looked it, beautiful. It couldn't have been better timing for she her. She looked beautiful. She looked beautiful. And that was like her first real red carpet because she hasn't been able to do press. Yeah. Also, I really enjoyed the iHeartRadio Awards because they gave an homage. I don't know if that's the right word, but it is to my um, my one and only true loves. Five seconds of summer. They got like a, a proper American introduction, and I learned a lot about them. I'm, I'm such a big fan of theirs, but I didn't even know they started on YouTube. I didn't know that Vine was it Vine. YouTube. They oh. said on the thing last night. I didn't know that either. And they're just like a couple kids from Australia who just love rock music. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I just love, I love them and I love their love for like their work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like proud of their songs. Yeah. And they're like also proud to like not be like the one most popular One Direction. They're like very much in their category of rock. They don't stray from that. They're like, they have branded themselves as like the simple plan for millennials and they don't change their music to like become more like Z100, you know? Right. But then they inadvertently are Z100. Because Young they have. Blood, it's confusing blood, that there's a song blood. called Young Blood and there's an artist called Young Jackie, Blood. Jackie, I couldn't agree. Green and more. you know, it's things like that that make me feel old. Yes. Because when, when I saw Young Blood was performing, I was like, Young, Young Blood. But Young there's Blood. a different spelling. Oh, did you Fortnite in your room last night? I was Fortnite in my room, much like Alicia Keys' son doing the floss. Oh my God, he so cute. He did a really good job. And he's playing the piano. Yeah, he's really talented. And she also has like very well behaved children. She does. I mean, she seems like she would be an incredible mother. No, totally. Like, She's I was in just tune loving with her. what's necessary. Totally. And it's like her kids will get into college based on merit. Based on their merit, yeah, totally. Okay, but the story is Taylor Swift shuts down haters with empowering speech at the 2019 iHeartRadio Music Awards. The 29-year-old pop star took the stage at the 2019 iHeartRadio Music Awards as she received one of the highest honors at the star-studded event. The songstress is used to winning awards for her musical talents, however, this one in particular holds a special meaning. Before taking to the stage to accept her award, which was presented by fellow musician and friend Marin Morris, the star gushes over the highlight videos displayed on the big screen. Earning the coveted Tour of the Year Award for her reputation tour achievements, the singer-songwriter gives an emotional acceptance speech. Quote, one of the most wonderful things about the way that this whole tour turned out is that, like, for the entire six months leading up to the first show of this tour, every headline that I read was, this is going to be a massive failure, she says, holding her award. She continues, and it really did wonders for my self-esteem. It was really great to hear people saying that I was going to be playing to nearly half empty stadiums. Honestly, I remember reading that, and I Me think too. we reported that on the show. It was New York Post. It's a page six article, and it says, uh, sales for Taylor Swift's North America tour are set to be her worst yet, or something. Yeah, and that she will be playing to empty stadiums. Yeah. Quote, I've learned a lot. One of the things I've learned is that life is really unpredictable and people can make forecasts and they can make predictions, but those predictions and forecasts may not come true if there is an unforeseeable factor involved. And that unforeseeable factor in this case was my fans. I honestly owe everything, everything in my life to you. Honestly, I really, I, this was a great speech and I related to it on a personal level. Me too. And you know, I didn't realize until right now that like, when the whole snake Kim Kanye thing happened, like that was her worst moment. Her whole world shattered. She went into hiding. She finally released an album. And then I guess when she released the ticket, uh, tour tickets, sales were a little slow. Do you think she thought like for a moment that like it was the end? Cause like the one thing she's always been able to do is like sell music and sell tickets. No, I don't think she thought it was the end because she had just released Reputation. So the album did really well. I think she knew that the fans were there. But honestly, like, it's hard to get tickets to a Taylor Swift show. I, I don't know. I wonder how do most people buy tickets? Because like, I wait till the day before and buy them on StubHub. Right. I either have an alert for when pre-sale's going live and like a toaster will give me a code and I'm the first one to buy a ticket and like I get a pretty decent seat for the best price or I do it the day before, or I get free seats sometimes if I'm working right. with if Live Right, if I'm Nation. trying to thirst, if it's a country concert, I'll thirst with the publicist. But I'm just wondering, how does the majority of people get tickets? Do they do the whole like Ticketmaster thing? Um, I think they do the Ticketmaster thing. Like Dana does, goes to a lot of concerts, so, and she's a pretty prudent gal. So she'll get tickets when they go live, or she'll be like scouting for tickets. Like you have to remember to keep checking. Right. And I've done that for like a lot of the shows of people that I love, like my Kelly Clarkson tickets and my... Uh, 
Casey Musgraves tickets, I think I was like part of the first 10 yeah. people buying tickets. Also, if you listen to artists on Spotify very early in their career, you get pre-sale codes yeah. and then Spotify emails you and I've gotten a lot of tickets That's that so way. That's so crazy. Like they like track you. I know, but it's like, okay, at least you're using, okay, I understand. Everyone takes your information and they sell it. But if you're going to do all that, just at least like give me something. Give me premium. a promo code. Like yesterday, all of my ads for like shopping sites, like usually it's like targeted ads based on things you've already looked at. And it's like, I either bought it or I decided I didn't want it. So stop serving me things that I've already looked at. It's really annoying when they serve you things like you already purchased. What do you think? You need two pairs of boots? No. It's annoying. So, but yesterday I was getting stuff that I've never seen before that was like my style. So I don't know who's doing my targeted ads, but you were on point yesterday. Well, actually, it's really weird because I was getting targeted ads for like cute Coachella looks literally two days after we decided that we might go to Coachella. That's weird. Me and Jack are like the antichrist when it comes to Coachella, but we try and remain the epicenter of all things cool and fun. And unfortunately, that means we might have to go to Coachella. It's a struggle for us. It's a constant struggle. It's a constant struggle because of the treacherousness. And like, I just feel like as a chubby person, like Coachella is just not that like chubby friendly. It's a lot of walking. There's a lot of you know situations for chub rub. And I do feel as if I just, if I am gonna go, like I am gonna have to like get my looks together, get my <laughs> body snatched because. It's just not, it's not an environment that's like Claudia friendly. You know right, what I mean? Right, but you're less chubby than you were the last time we went. That's true. It could only be easier if you think about it. Right. And we would be going now because like, you know, brand partnerships are very lucrative at Coachella and we're smart business women. Totally. Speaking of brand partnerships, one thing I want to try before Coachella, if we do decide to go, I'm on Noom and I do think that it is the one thing that might actually be able to get this sister snatched. I think that it will because I've been on it and I've been enjoying it and really it's the Teddy Mellencamp of apps. Oh my God, that's a good call. It holds you accountable. It's yeah. like, I don't want to eat this thing or not work out because then I have to tell Noom. No, totally. It's like when you had a bad test grade and you have to like bring it to get a signature to your parents. Mm -hmm. So weight loss is in the palm of your hand, literally with Noom, on your phone whenever and wherever you need it. We're all strapped for time, but Noom just asks you to commit 10 minutes a day to you. I think I can do that. With Noom, you'll have a personalized training and with your own support team for less than the price of a single appointment with a nutritionist or a personal trainer. You get a goal specialist, it's a behavior change professional, nutritional expert, and fitness trainer, and a community that's there for you. Much like the morning toast. Group We're discussions with fellow new members to keep you encouraged. Noom is designed for results. It's out with the old habits, in with the new. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash toast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash toast. What do you have to lose? For me, a lot. Visit noom.com slash toast to start your trial today. Perfect. Can you imagine like us at Coachella again? When we went last time, we swore. We were like, we're never gonna go. We swore and it was Trechella and it was like awful, but it was also really great. We had a really fun time. We made so many memories. We made so many friends. We actually did make a lot of friends and good. And um, it was great for the biz. Connections, yeah. We had just started the show two weeks before and it was really good to like get ourselves out there. And I feel like now, I, I mean, as an as a per, like now you, the whole brand ecosystem of like working with brands and revolve of it all and blah, 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 it's like, it's not like you're just going to a festival. No, and but also, also Ariana Grande and Casey Musgraves yes. are performing, so it's much more sceny vibes than it was then. And I think now that we've been once, we know a few um, like shortcuts when it comes to removing treacherousness. Like, I will not, ref I refuse to go to the festival like any time before six o'clock. Like, mm -hmm. sun's down, then I go, and that's when most people go. And I need to get the special parking pass so that we can just drive right up, and I don't have to walk that long desert road. Yeah. I will be working on the parking pass, and that's my job. Great. Also, I wanted to talk about Taylor Swift's speech because not only did I relate to it on personal level, like everyone telling you that you're nothing and then they don't realize the power of your fans, the toasters, I just like felt that to my core. But also, she is a toaster, and it's clear that she listened to our episode of The Toast of our big fight where I said Taylor Swift was treating her Instagram like the Da Vinci Code, and her fans are like fucking Nicolas Cage in National Treasure trying to figure it out. And she alluded to that. She was like, I love that you guys are so passionate about the work. And she pretty much said... When there's new music, you'll be the first to know. Stop looking at my Instagram for codes. And I... And I so appreciated it. I felt seen and then I felt heard. Well, I felt disappointed because to be honest, I thought the only reason she was really showing up to that farce of an award show was to do something special like perform. No, but or... she did give more clues and more overt heavy handed well, clues here, the butterflies. Now, I know she said, you'll be the first to know, like, shut up. But then I also thought that was a code. The first, April 1st. Oh. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Did you see that thread in the toasters of everyone making fun of dissecting her posts? There's 87, 87 dots on this photo. Her album's coming out in 87 days. Palm trees, seven letters, eight letters. That means the album's coming out in eight days. Guys, just, it gives, it, it's something to do while there's no Taylor music, okay? Agreed, but she ha she's now being heavy-handed 
in some of the vibes that she's putting With the butterfly out. motif. So the butterfly motif, which I don't know how much I'm feeling considering like, I know a lot of people have done butterflies before, but right now Casey Musgraves is in a butterfly stage and it is still happening, so. I don't care, I'm just so happy that we're out of like that dark snake, black leather, crimson lip. And it's very pleany. It's positive, happy, light go airy. She's so happy, she's in love. She's not being tied down by her reputation. She's free. And her outfit last night, I know that you loved it, and I thought it was really cute for Kesha five years ago with the no, pink hair. No, it was cute. I just and think it's, I think it's representative of the new phase we're going into, which is light, like, airy, happy, butterfly, mermaid. Legs. 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 Pink hair. Loved it. The pink hair, to me, was an interesting choice, but you know what? She never makes interesting choices. She's always playing it safe, so for that reason, I give a gold star. And you know, I just give a gold star because I like anything she does, and I'll never say anything bad about her, and I, and I own that. And I, you can be that way, but I'm going to, I'm going to Teddy Mellon camera. I'm going to hold her Jackie, accountable. Jackie, you're going to be a Katie Maloney. You're going to call it as I see it. I'm going to call it as I see it. And I just want, like, and I will also give allowances based on, like, you know, who she's been in the past. And I want to say, like, I like where this is all headed. I'm excited for her. Also, as much as she's so calculated, and I'm sure the iHeart Radio Awards were, like, ready to do whatever to have her walk on the carpet. Like, there was an awkward moment where T-Pain made a joke about her. And she didn't know how to react. With the boobs. That mm -hmm. was just, like, weird. And given, like, her being, like, a, an advocate for, like, sexual assault, sexual and assault victims. And I just thought it was a really weird joke. I couldn't agree more. It and was it, a weird joke on his part. And then she didn't know. In that moment, she had to do, like, years worth of PR research to figure out how to re react. And it's like, at first, she wants to be cool and go along with it. But then she's like, this goes against everything I've been preaching for. But wait, am I going to be a bitch at this award right. show now? She didn't know. And then she was just like this. Like, it get out of my face. It was really awkward. Yeah. It was awkward. I don't think she's, I think like after that, she had a pit. I did too. Okay. I'm it was bad. a weird joke. It was a weird joke. For a million different reasons. And it's like, what? there's no correct reaction. I see the picture on your iPad and I know what the story is and it's so sad. It's so sad. And it's also, we'll get to it. Louis, Louis. I don't know. Louis Tomlinson's sister, Felicite Tomlinson, dead at 18. Louis Tomlinson's younger sister, Felicite, and that's how her name is spelled, Tomlinson, has been found dead at the age of 18. Felicite, a model and social media influencer with over 1.3 million Instagram followers, reportedly collapsed on Wednesday after a suspected heart attack at her apartment in London. The Metropolitan Police Service tells E! News that police were called by London Ambulance Service on Wednesday to a residential address following reports of a female in cardiac arrest. Officers attended, and a female believed to be age 18 was pronounced dead at the scene. Police are in the process of informing her next of kin. The statement reads from police, at this stage, the death is being treated as unexplained. A post-mortem examination will take place in due course. This is really sad, and it's also not the first story of a young woman dying of a heart attack this week. Well, it's really sad also because his mom just died too. So like, and he was like so heartbroken about his mom and like all the One Direction members like got together just to, except for Zayn, to like, you know, rally around him because I think he was like super devastated by it. And now it's just like, oh my God, this is the worst thing that can happen after the worst thing that already could happen happened, you yeah. know? Yeah, this is a tough time. What's the other situation? Um, Miss Teen Universe. Oh my God, yes. Was also pronounced dead. I think it was not more than a week ago uh, from a heart, heart failure. Attack. Yeah. yeah. So weird. So weird and sad and scary. And I mean, 18-year-olds dying from heart attack is not a, a normal, not normal thing. So uh, perhaps there's something else going on. Uh, either, you know, I don't know what the word is, but, you know, it could be an existing issue because people do have heart issues. Right. Or, you know, added factors. But Well, so um, I just read an interesting article. It was an interview with Louis Tomlinson like right before this, talking about like his relationships with the One Direction man bandmates and how like he was ready on the outs with Zayn, but when his mom died, like everyone really came for him except for Zayn. And I'm just curious to know like how the boys are rallying around him again. And I'm just, I'm always keeping my eye out for the One Direction reunion. So I'm just wondering how this is gonna affect it. You know? I think the same people will be there for him. Me too. And, and when did his mom pass away? Like a year ago, less. Oh. Well, unless he's made amends with Zayn, I don't think we can expect him to come around. This is so sad. And like, she's so cute and pretty. So cute and pretty. Does he have another sister who's an influencer? I don't know. Lottie. Lottie? I'm pretty sure he has a sister who's like a big, big beauty influencer, but then apparently she's a beauty influencer too. Lottie Tomlinson, will you Google her? L-O-T-I? L-O-T-T-I-E. Maybe, I know, I'm pretty sure she's a sibling of One Direction. Lottie Tomlinson. And in this case, it's just like- Charlotte Tomlinson. No, there's a girl named- Yeah. Oh, she, but she calls herself Lottie. That's Oh cute. yeah, you're right, you're right. 3.3 .3 million followers. Mm -hmm. So he just like gave careers to his whole family. Totally. Oh my God, she's so pretty. Yeah, she's- Are you sure they're sisters? I'm pretty sure, because I, I followed her for a long time based on the fact that she was his sister. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right, you're right. 
Interesting. Siblings, Louis and Felicite. Felicite. Yeah, you're right. So it's really sad for both of them. Oh my God, so sad. Well, at least he's, he has someone. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just him, his mom, and his sister. No, he has another sister. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So sad. Like, I feel like he's such a nice boy. I, I do too. And I feel like he's also, like, sadly, like, a really family-oriented boy. Agreed. Like, he, his whole family has careers because of him, like, right. big ones. And, like, he kept in touch through the fame and the fortune. You know, that documentary about um, One Direction where they were, like, on, like, their fourth tour in a row with, like, releasing an album, recording the album while they're, while they're on their previous tour, then the second this tour is over, releasing the album, never going home. And it had a lot to do with, like, their relationships with their families. It's actually a really good documentary. It is a good documentary. And this seems to be a theme with all, like, music biopics or documentaries where it's, like, album tour, album tour, and they get really burnt out. And I just watched the Amy Winehouse documentary, mm -hmm. and it is just, like, so tragic. But it's, like, the music industry demands that. Like, they're, like, we want the next... The, right. The record label... Oh, excuse me, it's like, we want the album now. And it's like, wouldn't you rather have a band with a 30-year career with, this, with a ton, like a huge discography, as opposed to like a band with five years of like a ton of music that they just churned out? Right, that like, 100%. And she like, Back to Black was like her biggest album. Right. Record smashing. But she wrote it in the worst time of her life. And then she gets into a better place, but now she has to tour that album and sing those songs. It's so depressing. Every single, it's so depressing, and she couldn't do it anymore. Well, what Taylor Swift says a lot is that she writes these songs about painful moments, and then every time she sings a song, it like is associated with that painful moment. But then when she gets to do it on tour, she no longer associates you know, that song with the painful moment. She associates it with that great crowd in New Zealand or whatever. You Agreed, know? but I, I think that a lot of what Taylor Swift's singing on is like Jake Gyllenhaal, Never Getting Back Together. It's a little more catchy than like... Amy Winehouse. No, I disagree. Amy Winehouse's breakup of a man who addicted her to drugs. Oh my God, but Taylor Swift is the most dramatic. Like you can't, just because her songs are more like poppy, no, but doesn't I mean think, the pain isn't as real. I think some of the heartbreaks that she sings about, not all of them, because some of them are deep and real, but like they're not as deep of loves. No, I think Amy Winehouse is just a be. whole lot, was a whole lot more unstable. Like I think Taylor Swift like comes from That's this, true. like like her mom goes on tour with her. Like she she's able to compartmentalize more and she doesn't do drugs. Whereas like Amy Winehouse was a little bit of a mess and not necessarily had like the most stable up bringing so she it wasn't it was easy for her to get like kept you know getting taken away by the by the lyrics yeah okay that's that's fair also everyone is commenting that Lottie is a really cute name for Charlotte and I totally agree like I, I didn't realize to, Charlotte I need to write that down totally that's a really for good one, one of your names I love names that have built-in nicknames me too like, like I love that my name is Jacqueline but everyone calls me Jackie okay but like I know you like the name babe but would you ever name your kid Barbara no and that's my I love the name babe for a kid um and I've loved it for a really long time but I don't have the the, the larger name that you apply to college with I always said like Jacqueline I applied to college with and maybe if my name was Jackie I wouldn't have gotten in maybe because Jackie like sounds and, kind of crazy and wacky and maybe I would have had to bribe someone maybe you'd be wacky Jackie I so am that's wacky what they call Jackie. you around campus Oh, yeah. Maybe I would have had to bribe someone. Like Lori Loughlin, Maybe. who... Oh, my God, another story about Lori Loughlin? I mean, it's an update on the updated what scandal. Else? She has been dropped by Hallmark. Oh, yeah. So now it comes... And um, right, Olivia, Olivia Jade, Jade has been dropped, dropped by Sephora, Sephora Princess HP. Polly. What's Princess Polly? I have no idea. I thought it was weird that they had to like announce that they dropped her. Like, nobody even knows who you are. Um, they're, like, cashing in on the press. Uh, Sephora, Tresemme... HP. Eight, what? Oh, really? She had a commercial on TV with her mom. Oh, my God, shut up. Mm-hmm. And Hallmark for Lori Laughlin. Like, this is now, it's like day three where the brands come. And I actually, oh, it was on Access Hollywood where they started talking about it a little bit before us. And they made a really interesting point. And they had like a legal expert, their version of the Lisa Bloom. And what he said was like, this is going to affect Lori so much more than Felicity Huffman. Because Felicity Huffman has always played these like, like not villainy, but like more edgy roles mm -hmm. where like, and she doesn't have like a corporation to lean on. Whereas now Lori Loughlin has like had secured herself as like America's sweetheart. She's Aunt Becky, Full House, Hallmark Channel, Smile, Happy Christmas. When calls the heart. So like her and her family are much more beholden to corporations and it's going to affect them that much more. Whereas like Felicity Huffman has never pretended to be anything other than Lynette Scavo. Right. And, let, and this is on brand for Lynette Scavo. No, I mean Lynette Scavo did do this with her twins. Right. That's a very good point. Also, I, they mentioned on Access Hollywood that... Um, 
this obviously the case has to go to trial and people have to be tried and they could be innocent or guilty and if they are proven innocent they can sue these brands and these like Lori Loughlin could sue Hallmark for wrongful termination. Yeah, I mean that's like best case scenario for them because it's definitely true. Right. But and I think Empire is having the same issue with Jesse Smollett oh. because if he gets fired and is proven innocent, but they he have was a being big... written off the show before, so they it's not No, he wasn't. That I think that was that came out to be not true. He just oh. wanted more money. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so he was just thirsty. Okay. Yes. Seems like, you know, not a big deal to throw your life away for. But it also seems like the brands are choosing, okay, we'd rather take the lawsuit down the line than have right. to deal with, you know, the people on Twitter with their pitchforks. Right. Well, okay. Um, wait, I had one more thought about this. Oh, I mean, and my question is still out there. Where are the mugshots? Right. Now it's weird. Uh, I was reading the comments yesterday, and it seems like pe- not people Not only have they been know. arrested, but they've also been released on bail. So, like, they really were in jail. Booked. I don't know. It's weird. It is weird. Also, Lori Loughlin's daughters have dropped out of USC after the scandal. Right, people were like, are they going to, is USC going to kick him out? Is USC going to kick him out? They're like, nah, bitch, fuck you, I'm out of here. Right, because they couldn't, like, deal with the bullying. I mean... I mean, it just sucks because the older one, I think, was supposed to graduate this year. And then it really is all for nothing. Right, so now it's like you went to all this trouble, spent all this money, and, like, now it's really for nothing. Personally, I would have stayed. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could have. If I, not if I were Olivia Jade, except now she kind of does need college because, like, her career is in a lull, but I do think that there is a possibility that she can, depending on what she's made of. Well, here, so what the Access Hollywood guy said was actually very interesting. He was like, the, the host was like, do you think this is going to affect their careers? Like, are they done? And he was like, well, for Lori Laughlin, like, maybe. But, you know, for Olivia Jade, like, she's a super young audience. They tend to, like, like controversy, and her audience and her base might grow from this. That's what they said. Yeah, because now she, everyone, like, the people who are writing up Olivia Jade never wrote her up before. She's right. getting so much exposure. And now, okay, who's Olivia Jade? Let me go look at her video. Hey, right. wait, she's kind she's of pretty, and, right. And if, you can for, and if you can forgive the scandal, and if you, if it does come out that they did not know, then they're not complicit in this. Well, I think, here's my theory. It's like, they, they knew, you know? She knew she wasn't on the crew team or whatever. But it's like, when your mom is telling you to do something, you just think it's right. right. So it's like, if my mom says it's okay, like, whatever. And yes, maybe it's not by the book, but that doesn't mean it's a felony. You know, I don't think, when you're taking a fake picture, you never think you're committing a felony. Right. People on Instagram take fake pictures all the time of trips they didn't go on. Yeah, no, like, the Hotels adults, they didn't stay the at. The adults in the situation, like, knew very well what was going mm-hmm. on. Um, but I just think when you're a kid and, like, your mom tells you to do something, you automatically assume it's okay and that it's the right thing to do because, like, my mom wouldn't let me do something bad, you know? Right. So, so I just think, like, it's an interesting position for the kids. It is. And I think it'll, I don't think, I think the jury is still out on, on how we treat them. Obviously, you know, the media is so excited to take them down, which makes me less excited because I just think yeah. it's a sad state of the world. Well, and you know what? The Huffman kids are just probably loving the fact that, like, Olivia Jade has a YouTube channel because everyone's really fixated. She's the face of this. She's the face of it because she's, like, this beautiful girl. She's like, the beautiful face of this. And the Huffman kids, like, nobody knows who they are. I don't even know if their last name's Huffman. Is it Gallagher? I don't know. Is it Scavo? So they're probably just like so grateful for the Olivia Jade adult because she's really taking the brunt of it. I don't know if they're grateful for anything right now. No, I mean, in a situation like this, you you take your blessings and you count them. Right. So anyways, I would have, I would have stayed at school if I were Bella. Half a semester, keep your head down, do your homework, get good grades and get the fuck out of there and get a degree. Well, you now enough. I wonder if they're going to enlist maybe in the University of Phoenix. They could do it from home. They could. You don't yeah, to, they don't have to deal with no students. Um, and just one more residual from this, and I'm sure we'll expect more, is Stanford students are the first to sue colleges named in the admissions scandal. So the thirst monsters have come out to play. Four college students, plus parents of three of them, have filed a class action suit against the colleges wrapped up in a nationwide admission scandal, plus the scheme's mastermind, claiming that the plot denied them a fair shot at entry to elite institutions. Well, there's one, that makes sense to me, but there's one case, Stanford, there are students suing their schools because now their degrees aren't worth as much. Oh my God. This country is so <laughs> litigious. I can't, like, okay, so they're just four random students. Why do they have more of a, a case than any other student? Because they're just, they're getting in on it. Well, no, this is a separate case. I guess there's, the students claim that their applications were undercut by William Rick Singer's plot to fraudulently get undeserving kids into top schools in exchange for bribes from their well-heeled parents. Damn, I should have applied to Yale and not gotten in and then, been, and then sued. Right, no, the kids who have, who have 
um, a case here are the really smart, hardworking kids with 4.0 GPOs from maybe not a great part of uh, the country who didn't have access or didn't have the, the opportunities to, you know, meet a William Scavo, whatever his name is. Like, those kids have a case here. Not the assholes who actually got in and graduated, but now my degree is not worth as much. Yeah. What losers. Yeah, those are the thirst monsters. And I, and I, I, I'm here for people. I mean, you have to prove that. Like, you were literally the number one on the wait list I when mean, your spot went to. The fact that you can sue anyone in this country for anything is mind-boggling. And I just want to say, like, I have a case against the Hunt and Fish Club restaurant in New York. And I never sued. But, like, I was seriously injured <laughs> in their restaurant. Their entry is really slippery. <laughs> And their no. stare to get in is really steep. That, no. Okay. Ready? Ready? I have a case, but I never took it up. But maybe I will because now everyone's getting lawyered up. Ready? Okay. I was walking in to a meeting that I was early for. So she said the person's not here yet. It was very hot in the restaurant. I'm like, okay, lady, I'm going to wait outside. And I, had to, I was on the phone with Ben. So in New York, in the wintertime, like the front door to a a restaurant has like um, an extra door. It's like they make this little alcove out of like plastic so that like the wind doesn't get into the restaurant. Uh -huh. So I open the door, the real door. Then I'm in the little alcove. I open the alcove door. And you think once you're on the alcove, you're on the street, you're basically outside, right? So I open that door and I step out to what I think is the street. No, it was a huge step and I <laughs> went flying, like full face on the ground. People on the street were like, oh, is she okay? Like, I was mortified. And the best part was that Ben heard the whole audio. So he said, this is what I did. Oh no! <laughs> it was horrifying. People from the restaurant like out here, like literally ready to call an ambulance. It was the biggest step. I fell onto the concrete. Like I was so verklempt. My purse, my jacket, my hair, like horrifying. Thank God the person that I was meeting with like wasn't there yet because like I couldn't have been able. Like I would have had to go home. Horrible. Nothing's worse than when your knees hit the ground. And I have a case. Yeah, I got like scraped palms and knees. It was really embarrassing. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. I, I have a case. People are saying that Bella is a sophomore. Oh, never mind. I don't know where I made up. No, Margo you told didn't me. make that up. Margo told me that she's I, a senior. I saw that, that. I saw that in a few places. She just had half a semester left. I guess that makes the story more interesting. Yeah, because as a sophomore, that's a three more years of of awkwardness. But you know what? Now you're right. I feel like they're closer in age. I don't know. They are. I, I'm pretty sure they're just one year apart. Yeah, okay. That makes more sense. So. So, lesson learned. I'm going to sue Hunt and Michelle. Okay, and now. If anyone is a lawyer, I need to lead them on Barnes. They don't pay unless you get paid. Ooh, I mean, I think the statute of limitation has run out on your case, and you don't have any proven injuries. You didn't call anyone. You didn't go to a doctor. I should have taken pictures of my injuries. You, you're right. Yeah. I think it's Fuck. over. Next, go back in the winter. Do it again. Yeah, okay, done. But we'll now, delete this, this episode. episode. We'll delete the episode. Okay. Uh, also, each school now has existing students who are part of this scandal. And so what do you, what do you, like, USC hadn't made a decision about Bella and Olivia right. yet, but they made the decision for themselves. What do you think about the students who are in school right now? I don't know. I think it should be on a case-by-case -case situation. Like, if your GPA is over a 3.0, you can stay. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, you know, that's like well, it depends on the school. Like, if it's Harvard, it's three five. Mm, three zero, three zero is is a good grade. Whatever it is that you need in order to like rush or something, whatever we set the standard at, then you can stay. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to do is. Like, I guess the right thing to do is is kick them out. But the, like I said, the real tragedy here is the kids who weren't able to so go because of them. So that doesn't fix that problem. No, you know? No. It doesn't. It's like, unless you can replace, find the most qualified student from that year who didn't get in and replace them, like, you know? Honestly, that shouldn't be so hard. Yeah. They have everything on file. They have files, yeah. That's the good fix. Yeah. But they're already in school somewhere else. And, you know, everything happens for a reason, so they're probably so happy where they are. And they're Hopefully. like, thank God I didn't get into Yale, because I just love the University of Phoenix. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next story, some drama in the hosting world that we're not a part of, unfortunately. Ooh. Howard Stern and Wendy Williams are going at it. Oh, shit. Now I don't know whose side to take. I know. It's a war of the media personalities. Howard Stern dedicated a generous portion of a Sirius XM radio show on Wednesday to slamming Wendy Williams after she criticized his softer tone in his new book, Howard Stern Comes Again. Oh, she came for him. She came for him first. She said pretty, he has a new book, and she said and he's gone Hollywood now, like... It's, you know, he's on yachts with all these people. Like, it's not interesting. He's not what he used to be. Oh, so she came for him. She came for him, so he said. Oh, God. I guess it was a 30-minute rant. 
Jealous bitch. Well, wait, I just have to say, like, there's, in the current, like, in this past month, there are so many rumors swirling around about Wendy Williams. Like, she really should just, like, not come for people so much because now they're going to come for her and there's a ton of material. Right. Like, about her husband. There's just a lot of rumors swirling. So I just think there was a bad decision on her part. I'm sorry, continue. Jealous bitch, you're nobody to me, the 65-year-old shock jock said. You'll never be me, Wendy. You'll never be me. You can pretend to be me. You can pretend to be like me, but you're not. You don't have my wit, and you don't have my talent. You couldn't have that career. You're a fly. Ooh. The spat started when Williams discussed Stern's forthcoming book. She said, Howard is so Hollywood right now. And Howard, I love you, but since you've gone Hollywood, everything you say is so predictable. Every story is going to be about, oh, I love this one, and then we went on their yacht. He's a Hollywood insider, which sucks. You started like me, being of the people, but at some point you sat behind the microphone for too long, and now you are the people. Upon hearing Williams' sentiments, however, a certainly unpredictable <coughs> stern fire back, claiming it was Williams who had, in fact, gone Hollywood. What <coughs> he said, what evidence do you have that I'm Hollywood, honey? I grew up a scumbag, and I'm still treated like a scumbag. Totally. I love how I'm talking like Howard Stern. Yeah. What, because I found success? Now I'm with Hollywood? What, because I know Jimmy Kimmel? Who am I hanging out with? She doesn't know who I'm hanging out with. She doesn't know what I do in this world. She doesn't know who I'm fucking with. All she talks on that show is about Hollywood. That's as Hollywood as you get. Are we Hollywood? No, wait, if that's anyone really in Hollywood point. called her to hang out, she'd be there in two seconds. Totally. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's so funny how they're using this as an insult. I'm like, go Hollywood. I would love to. Like, are you kidding? I wish someone would fucking say that about me. Oh, that Claudia, she went so Hollywood. Like, please. So I think it's a funny, um, it's a funny argument, like, that this is what they're fighting about. And it's true. Like, they both really got so successful because they're super relatable. Like, when he keeps it real, I'm like, Howard just, like, says anything he wants. Like, he doesn't give a shit who he's talking to. And I feel like they both definitely maintain that level of relatability. But they both also have their Hollywood moments. I would say probably Wendy more than Howard. You would think, but I think it's also because we're more familiar with Wendy than we are with That's Howard. True. I don't know. I don't follow Howard on Instagram. I don't know what he does with his life. No, but this is like I don't Wendy. To his show Wendy even. mysteriously disappearing for three months and then also just like coming back and like lying about why she disappeared. Like that's that's quite mysterious and quite Hollywood. This is what he said. What have I done to this woman? Nothing. I've been gracious to her. Worry about your husband, not me. Ooh. Fuck you and your dumb show and your mystery illness. She disappears. <laughs> God. She disappears for two months, nobody knows why, and now she's questioning me? Thanks, honey. I never fainted on my show either. Oh, my God. I'm not somebody bad. you want to fuck with, I feel honey. bad laughing, like, but it's honestly a good it's point. It's shocking. And you know what? Like, this was, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is the way that I feel. Like, anytime there's a situation where, like, someone has tweets or, like, someone's being accused of something, like, I am trepidatious because, you're like, you could throw that right back in my face. Like, I'm self-aware. And Wendy out here, like, coming for people when, like, her... When her, coming from the... Coming for the biggest savage of them all. Right. Especially when, right now, you're quite vulnerable. Like, I just think this was a big mistake. Yeah. He said, I'm not somebody you want to fuck with, honey. I don't want to hear your, your bullshit. And you're not a nice person. Nobody likes you. That's why you can't go Hollywood. Oh, oh people, my God. <laughs> people do not like her. The staff was doing a dance over at the William, Wendy Williams show when she was out. She's a big pain in the ass. I hate to break the news to you, honey. Good thing you hurried back. I like low key, like really like Howard Stern. I don't know why. I, His I, show's like not for me. I think it's very sexual. It's sexual and it's raunchy, but I like people, even when I don't agree with their opinion, who just aren't afraid to say what they think and are just no filter. That's why I even like Nightly Pop so much. Not every episode's the greatest episode, but they're not afraid to be mean. Yeah. Like everyone is so like, <laughs> yeah. like Katy Perry eats a closed bag of chips on American Idol. And it's just like, she's being cute. Yeah. And, and on Dale, Nightly Pop, they're like, She's really weird. Yeah, there's something off. There's something off. Yeah, no. I like how it's turned. Him and his wife, and I think that's his why wife people is like stunning. this show so much. Yeah. We're because just like we just out keep here. it real. Like, and I think that's why people miss Joan Rivers so much. And yes. now every time, every red carpet, someone could wear a trash bag. Beautiful, elegant, stunning. Right, because if you no say wrong. it, it's like bullying. It's you just can't. an ugly dress. Right. Oh, did you watch Project One Way? No. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on it. And okay. also, did you watch Carly Claus on Watch Robins Live? No, I did not. I was catching up on Riverdale. Whatever. Last night. At the end of the episode, like she's a, she loves to bake, and she baked Andy this like gorgeous like butter cake, and Andy was eating it right out of the bowl, and he dropped it, and it flipped over, and the whole cake fell on the floor. That's it was hilarious. really funny. By the way, someone commented, Lexi Siasia, the mugshots of Felicity and Lori won't come out because they do not serve law enforcement purposes. There's an article in People that explains. What does that mean? More. I don't know. That seems like a lie. Literally every per every celebrity's mugshots out there. And this. Seems like it would serve law enforcement purposes. Yeah, also it would serve to toasty purposes. Most definitely. Uh, back to Wendy and Howard. This is so savage, but I feel like they also 
as much as this is like below the belts, it's really not. They're just calling out the obvious things. And right. also saying that someone has gone Hollywood isn't that much of an insult. No, but they're both poking now at like the low hanging fruit. Like I didn't fade on my own show, you know? Right. It's, like it's radio. Also, it's radio. If you fade it, no one will know. Those are also the obvious things. Like I wouldn't be surprised if this is a PR stunt because when's the last time we talked about Howard Stern on this show? Totally. But like I feel like Howard Stern doesn't need press. Like he is constantly just relevant. He has so many listeners and like people fucking die for no, him. No, he doesn't need press, but like. I wouldn't be surprised if this is just like, there's no hard feelings. I feel like because the two of them are so tough, they also have thick skin. And it's like what Wendy said, saying that Howard Stern went in Hollywood, I don't think hurts his feelings. No. Saying that Wendy Williams fainted on her show is the truth. And I don't think that, that hurts her feelings. No. Because but she, she talks a lot of shit. And I think she can take a lot of shit. Yeah. But like as Howard Stern, it's like, why is this random woman coming for me? I'm going to come for her harder. And I totally get that. Right, but it, I think actually, I wouldn't be surprised if like they have dinner next month, you know? And yeah, they're yeah. like, we're both at the top of our no, game. No, they're scary. They're Cheers both to us. They're both scary as fuck. Like, I would never want to be on the receiving end of a rant from either of them. So there's a mutual love there, you know? And a respect. Mm -hmm. Respect. Okay, our fifth and final story in a little biz and health news because I just wanted to switch it up. Social media has been linked to a rise in mental health disorders in teens, survey finds. Young adults born after 1995, I think, I believe that is Gen Z, are <clears> expecting <throat> more mental health issues. Researchers point to lack of sleep and the rise of social media. I totally believe that. Mental health issues have risen significantly over the last decade, which I totally believe and I feel like you see it every day. And the rise of digital media may be one reason why, according to a national survey released Thursday. The research published by the American Psychological Association found sharp increases in the number of young adults and adolescents who reported experience negative who reported experiencing negative psychological symptoms, specifically in those born in 1995 or later, known as iGen. Never heard that before. Oh, they're making shit That's kind of cute because it's like the digital iPhone yeah. genre. But I, Gen Z was cute. Genre. Too. I think generation. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I feel like. Gen Z should be now, but the next gen should be called iGen, because then they'll be real. That's like iCarly. Well, so I definitely believe this. As someone, um, okay, I was born in 1994. Coincidentally, the greatest spike in symptoms occurred in 2011, around the same time social media burst onto the scene. Right. So, like, okay, I don't, I think I can, I would consider myself a part of this group. I was born in 1994. Like, I'm right there on the rim. And I never thought of myself as anyone. I thought I always had, like, very good mental health. Like, I'm just, like, I'm cool. Like, I'm chill. I'm normal, quote, unquote. But, like, now I find myself having terrible anxiety all related to social media. Like, what people think about me. Like, and it's definitely has, like, such a, it takes a toll on, on, like, your self-esteem. And it's, like, I never thought of myself as anyone who, like, struggled with mental health. But, like, I've been having crazy anxiety. And it, I think it really does. It's all about this. Yeah, for you and, specifically. And like our job doesn't help that, but like No, whatever. because now it's like technically you're stressing about social media, but you're also stressing about your job. And is that a common thing that people stress about their jobs? Right, so now it's like not only do, is, is my like livelihood incumbent upon being like accepted on social media, so now, so I have the normal, like everyone wants to be liked and want their pictures to be liked, but now my livelihood depends on it. So it's like if I do something wrong or if I say something stupid on the toast, like it eats at me like for years. Yeah, but I think also, like, back in high school, you used to get, like, sad or, or anxious. You know, you weren't invited to a party. You didn't have plans this weekend. People are going to ask you Monday what you did this weekend, and you didn't do anything. And I think now all of that is even more heightened Shoved with social in your media. Face. Because it's like, no one even has to ask you now. It's like, they've already made up their mind about you based on your social media. No, but it's like, you might not have known that a couple of people were hanging out over the weekend in high school, but, like, now they're taking pictures of it, and it's on Instagram and Snapchat. So I definitely know that everyone was hanging out without me. My suspicions right. were, were confirmed. Confirmed. Quote, we found a substantial increase in major depression or suicidal thoughts, psychological distress, and more attempted suicides after 2010 versus the mid-2000s, and that increase was by far the largest in adolescents and young adults, said lead author Jean Twenge, author of the book iGen and professor of psychology at San Diego University. I just learned that San Diego, I feel so stupid, but I just learned that San Diego is in the south of California is in Southern California. I thought it was San, by San Francisco in the north. I don't think about the location of the sands but very often. But you've been to San Diego, so I think you just knew. No, I haven't been to San Diego, I've been to San Diego. And do you want to know how I found out? Total Bellas, you know how they do a map of where they're flying? <sighs> That's funny. I was like, San Diego's down there, who That's knew? really funny, so informative. So informative, I've been loving Total Bellas. And by the way, I ship Peter Krauss and, and Nikki Bella so much. Really? They went on the cutest date ever. They were How did these, they meet on the show? Uh, through a publicist. Okay. Nikki was like, I, well Bella, I can't call them both Bella. I know. Brie was like, Nikki, you should go on a date. And Nikki was finally coming around to the idea. Brie was like, I will set you up with a publicist on a celebrity date because it's hard to date normal people. Yeah. And so she had a few options and she chose Peter from The Bachelor. And the whole family, when he came to pick her up, they were like, 
swooning over how cute he was. That's they were so like, he, cute. And they kept saying he was tall, which I think was a dig to John Cena because he's like really short. Sure. They were like, he's so tall. He's so I tall. I can't believe they're not together. Like after all that, that 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 they put us through, like I'm really upset about it. And she's with her Dancing with the Stars partner now. What's his name? Artem. Dancing with the Stars is like out here making babies. Yeah. I mean, when you dance with someone, there's just that chemistry. I, I sound like Nikki Bella. No, like, I mean, you're literally like grinding crotches with someone. Like how right. can you not want to have sex with them? Right. And everyone's like snatched AF. Totally. Uh, anyways, back to the story. These trends are weak or non-existent among adults 26 years and over. I guess I'm just on the, I'm on one day. Yeah. You know, I guess that's why I feel one day this way and one day that way. And over, suggesting a generational shift in mood disorders instead of an overall increase across all ages. Right, so it's not social media affecting everyone. It's social media affecting the young and impressionable. Yeah. I mean, I'm young, just not impressionable. I think this is really sad. Me too. And you can see it in the way that like really young like fans interact with like their their like Halseys or their Taylor Swifts, like the people they love. Like they it's so much more meaningful. They're like, you like saved my life. And I sometimes I'm like, you're so dramatic, but like, no, like their mental health is so fragile because they grew up in this fucked up world that like, no, Taylor Swift actually does save lives. Halsey actually does save lives. Totally. You know? And I feel like that's how people like I feel like the internet in general, has so many negatives, and this is one major one that no one's even attempting to fix yet. Like, what are right. we gonna do about this? The internet also has so many wonderful positives, and so does technology. You watch, you watch those Microsoft commercials, and people are doing things that they can never do, you know? Those Verizon commercials, like, people who are in the army literally get to talk to their husbands and wives, like, every day. It's incredible, and the toast is one of those things. We are a technology company, and I, and I don't know how much we contribute to negative mental health, but I think we contribute a lot to the positive, where it's like someone's having a rough time in their life and they know they can count on the toast every day for an hour a day to be distracted and to maybe even laugh. Sometimes 90 minutes, you know? Sometimes 90 minutes, and then if you're a Patreon member, you get even more. By the way, my Enneagram, speaking of just like your mental health and oh, your perception yes. of yourself, uh, the podcast episode that we did about my Enneagram test is going to be up today. It was quite informative for me. Yeah, you know, it, And now everything I'm doing and saying on the show, I'm thinking, this is because I'm this personality. Yeah, and don't you feel, like, super vulnerable when, like, you're opening up your, like, deep personality to the world? Yeah, like, it's like, am I a jealous person? Now I have to tell you guys. Right. And, and I do say who I am jealous of in life. You do? Yeah. Like, I don't remember. I mean, it's just like a silly social media jealousy of just, like, this girl is so cute and has such a fun job and has the best clothes and best body and is so pretty. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also like, a, it's a jealousy. But you have but to it's, watch the episode. Listen it's a jealousy episode. that you have with her, but it's also like, you like her. And admiration. Yeah. And I think it's good. To, like, I think also the same question of like, who inspires you is the same question of who are you jealous of? Totally. Who do you want to be like? Oh my God, that's a great question. You should turn it like that. Who are you jealous of? Oh my God, I don't know. Like. Someone whose career you're like, that's my dream career. Yeah. Amy Schumer? No. <laughs> like, because I feel like when it comes no. to like female comics, everyone's like Amy Schumer, and like I love Amy Schumer. I liked her a lot more before. I just like when she got to her peak, like I would have done it so differently. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm also someone who just hates when like entertainment becomes politicized, and she just like totally did a 360. Um, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah, I mean, nah. I don't know. There's no one out there because there's no one who's like super digital, but is also like traditional comic, which is why I feel like I'm a real trailblazer in my industry. Which you are. I'm making my own industry. So there's people. The coal mining industry. Like there's people in the digital space that I really admire, like the Olivia Culpo's. Like she just absolutely kills it in terms of content, in terms of personality, in terms of collaborations. Like she kills it. Then there's people in the comedy space that I like truly admire, like a la Joan Rivers. Um, even like weirdly enough, the more I've become a comic, the more I have a lot of respect for Kathy Griffin. And I know we like used to hate on her, but like she's actually low key funny and. I don't know. I, I she takes a lot of shit. I take a, yeah. I take a lot of the things we said back about her, except when she came for Andy Cohen. Like that's where I draw the line. Yeah, yeah. That was a weird time. Yeah. When she made that video, that was weird. But that was a dark place for her. Like she had a buzz cut. Like she was just in a dark place. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. I just don't. I haven't thought about it. I don't like look at others. I'm like always like I'm too self involved to like become competitive with anyone. You know. Yeah. Which speaks to your personality type. Yeah, a crazy person. patreoncom slash morning toast. That episode will be up probably this afternoon. So if you're looking for some afternoon content. Can I ask you something? Because speaking of just like mental health and anxiety, I do feel as if a lot of like my mental state has to do with my level of uh, like tiredness, like an level exhaustion. Of That's part of this study. And so I don't know where I heard this or if I made it up that like the way you feel during the day is based off the amount of sleep you had from the night before last. Ooh, I don't know about that. And so this week I've been like really studying my sleep, you know? 
Well, this survey, sorry to like keep bringing no. back to the survey, has a lot, it's, it's social media and sleep and they affect each other. The new survey also found that young people are not sleeping as much as previous generations, which also play a role in the rise of mental health issues. Sleep deprivation affects mood and is associated with anxiety and depression. Oh. Teenagers definitely use social media in a way that affects their sleep. They're exposed to light right before bed and that light exposure alone delays their sleep by 30 minutes. Blue light. It also affects their social interactions with others. That is so interesting. I try not to use my phone in the dark because that light keeps you up because your brain thinks it's daytime if, if it's so bright Also, out. like, not to get too gross, but, like, I, it's really bad just to be on your phone directly before bed, so I try and do something, like, in between laying on my phone in bed and then going to sleep, so, like, maybe, like, sex or something, you know? Like, there's good activities in between. Or TV. But that, TV also has that blue light. I mean, like, something offline. I don't offline. think it's as... Um, or I play with Theo. I don't think it's as destructive as your phone. I mean, men think that because we wear glasses when we watch TV, like, we're getting, like, we're not getting the blue light. No, you need to wear blue light glasses. Okay. And then you have to have a good night's sleep. Well, no, so I got a new mattress, and that's also helped my night's sleep. Me and Ben are different when it comes to, like, levels of softness, and, like, he is just, like, so adamant about having a rock-hard bed, and we did for a while, and it definitely took a toll on my back, so we got a purple mattress. Have you ever purple? Yes, I have. Purple How are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. Like, it feels different, which is good. I feel like every time I wake up, I'm like, oh, that was a different sleep, you know? Interesting. Because it feels like, I used to be, like, so restless. Like, I felt like I was up the whole night. Now I just feel like I'm asleep and I wake up. Do you know that's what I mean? That's great. Yeah. That's, I think that's how it's supposed to be. The purple mattress feels different than anything you've ever experienced because it uses a brand new material that was developed by an actual rocket scientist. It was not me. It was a different rocket scientist. It's like a memory foam... It's not like a memory foam that we're used to. The purple mattress feels very unique because it's both firm and soft at the same time, which is good for me and Ben because when we were like mattress shopping in a regular store, he was like laying on every bed. He was like, it's too soft, it's too soft. And I laid on every bed and I was like, it's too hard, it's too hard. You're going to love purple. Right now, our listeners will get a free purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to the great gifts they're offering site-wide. Text TOAST to 84888. The only way to get the free pillow is to text TOAST to 84888. That's T-O-A-S-T to 84. Eight eight eight. Great. I want to segue into our. Um, it feels like a new segment, but it's one we've been doing for a while. But we took a brief break from. But due to high demand, we have brought back Dear Toasters. Dear Toasters is our advice segment. If you email deartoasters at gmail.com, just see maybe some of your quandaries, some of your issues in life. I like the weirder ones, but you know we'll take the regular bridesmaid workplace drama types. Also, speaking of new segments, I had an idea. I want to run it by the toasters because okay. when I'm picking the stories every day, there are some headlines that are just like pure garbage, and it's like, why is this news? So. I'm thinking of a new segment, we could do it once a week even, where I just aggregate like the worst headlines of the week that are just not like... That make no sense. That make no sense. And it's like, highlights what's wrong with our world. Let me know if you want to hear them. Like how Tom Arnold saw Massimo a month ago at a party, along with a hundred other people. Totally. Um, okay. <clears throat> we, we keep it anonymous, so don't worry, you can send us something. <sighs> Dear Claudia and Jackie, I'm going to try to lay out all the details for you, so buckle in for Is a there wild a subject? ride. Is there a My name? boyfriend is stalking a woman. I signed into Facebook on my computer the other day. I typically only ever use my phone app. I noticed the people in my recent searches were people I had never heard of. I was so confused until I realized my boyfriend had signed into his Facebook on my computer and it must have been logged in for a while without ever me realizing. Once I realized this, I got a little curious about who these people were in his recent searches. I began to dig a little. Okay, I snooped. I couldn't help it. I was intrigued. What I came to find is that my boyfriend has been searching for the same woman's profile on Facebook every day, sometimes twice a day. He uses, he searches her name at any given time of day, 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 a.m., but it's always looking for her profile. This has been happening for months, maybe years. Obviously, I was curious, so I looked at her page. She's a married woman, a mom in her 50s. My boyfriend and I have been dating for a year, and we were both are in our early 20s. I'm not hurt or jealous, but just confused and baffled. And I thought it was an interesting factoid that was, well, interesting. I, I want some kind of explanation. I have no idea who this woman is and why he's stalking her on social media, but there is no way I can bring this up to him without giving myself away. Why is he fascinated with this woman who appears to be a standard mom? Thanks for coming on this wild ride. Sincerely disturbed. Wow. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to say straight up ask him. You've Me been too. dating for a year. If it's bad news bears, you are good to get out of there. But... Um, don't like just make assumptions. You never know. What if he's like secretly adopted and that's his real birth mother and he just wants to see what she's up right, to? Like don't come at him with an accusatory tone. Come at him with like the concern. curiosity. Like I want to know what's going on in your life. I noticed this. It's interesting. Or you could do the classic like you two are hanging out. You open up your computer and what's be like. This? Yeah, be like, oh, is this your Facebook? Who's Donna? You know? Yeah, but I think that might he might lie if he knows, if he thinks it's, you don't know the depth of what's going on. So just, I would approach him in a really non-confrontational way. Like make him feel comfortable, be like, comfortable, be like. I love you if you guys say that yet. And I just noticed, I mean, I wasn't snooping, but something that kept coming up that I'm just curious about is that you're searching for this person, like, um, who is she? 
And yeah, then, don't come at it as if you think they're like having sex, you know? Yeah, and not like because it could be his mama. Like, like come that's at gross. it seriously. Like use the tone that you would use if you thought that he was looking for his birth mother. Like something just really like I want to be there for you. What's going on? Not like, do you have a thing for older married women? Right. Good point. Good point. Well, I feel like that was some sage advice. Dear toasters, this is labeled nepotism, but not the good kind. First, let me start off by saying, big fan of your work, huge. I'm hoping this message finds you well as I find myself in a bit of a pickle. This is a long story, so bear with me. I'm a graphic designer in Detroit, Michigan at an ad agency that I started at following my college graduation in 2018. The main reason I got this job was because of my aunt. We'll call her Linda. She is used she to be- Is she I think so. She, I already like the It story. all comes back to aunts. Right, and um, one day I'll be getting Theo a job. Linda used to be a big PR talk of the town gal when I was just itty bitty. Both me and my sister, who was just a few years older, used to love when she would come babysit us because she was this carefree rock and roll aunt. She's 40 years old, single, has never had any kids, so she always joked that she was grooming us to be her prodigies. Prodigies, oh my God. She's not a typical aunt. No one is. She's the picturesque- What is a typical aunt? She's like the classic fun aunt, or so I thought. When both my sister and I were transitioning from high school to college, she decided to quit her job and start her own marketing company. She quote unquote hired my sister first as an intern. After only about a year, they completely ended all communication and had a huge falling out. My family just shoved it under the rug and refused to bring it up to either of them. Awkward. Fast forward to the summer after my freshman year of college, she offered me two internships, one at the company she was working at to pay the bills, and the other at a company, and at the other being for her company that she had, that had yet to take off. So I guess she was working two jobs. I would have been dumb to turn down the opportunity because internships in college are huge. However, during my real job, things started to get sketchy. She would often pull me into her office, shut the door, and make me work on stuff for her company, and there were many times where I was tricked into going on an errand for her, where we would be gone for three or four hours at a work event for her company. This, of course, gave me a huge pit, but I was, measly, I was a measly intern, and she was my aunt. About halfway into the summer, Aunt Linda was fired from the real company for reasons unknown, and I was offered to stay and complete my internship, where I worked for the next few summers as well. That's Great. definitely awkward. Fast forward to the summer before my senior year, I was ready to move on from the old company and tried and failed at finding a new apartment. Sorry, a new employment. <laughs> After six weeks of sitting around, Aunt Linda reached out that she could get me another internship at her new real job. I was skeptical because of her history, but was desperate, so I took it. When I finished the internship, I found out that she was fired again, still for reasons unknown. I freelanced with them, with them for the remainder of my senior year and landed a full-time position after I graduated, and it is where I currently work. A huge weight was lifted off my shoulder because I thought I finally had a good excuse to stop working for her company on the side because this real job is more important. However, about a month ago, <clears throat> into the job, my supervisor, not my true boss, but who I still report to and work with daily, Mike, asked me to go to a work lunch, and I quickly agreed. When we get to the restaurant, my aunt was there to join us. I was ambushed and told that she had convinced my supervisor and a handful of people at my real job that they were going to quit the company and go work for her. Oh my God. And that I was supposed to follow them. My aunt, from what I learned, is a horrible businesswoman and is clearly manipulating these people into thinking that she has a magical company where they've all can build money, success, and creative freedom. But knowing her track record, I knew it was a fire festival in the making. This is not an Ant Snitches. This is an Ant McFarland. Totally. In present day, I consistently have Mike pulling me in on secret projects for Linda's company, and I feel a lot of pressure to comply because I don't want to piss him off in my real work environment, and you can't really tell your aunt to fuck off, unfortunately. The other major problem fortunately. is that my aunt still owes me money for work I did for her in August, totaling about $600. I've seen her at family events, which are cold and awkward, and she always conveniently forgets the check. What do I do? Do I back out and risk both relationships? Do I tell everyone she's a sham? Thank you in advance from a loving toaster. Wow. Okay, wow, this is really tough. Um, Your aunt sounds crazy, first of all. She doesn't sound like an Aunt Lucy whatsoever. No, and she does not sound like an Aunt Snitches because I would never have Theo working for me and like doing odd jobs. Yeah, no, it basically, she's taking advantage of this girl, like their familial relationship, and that this girl like needs, like needs a job and needs connections and whatever. And it's like, snitches ain't, truly. But sometimes in the workplace, snitches are. And maybe you need to tell your actual boss, not the supervisor who's working with the fake end, the fence Nietzsche's. Yeah, that there's this underground thing going on, like blow the whole thing up from inside, but don't tell anyone it was you. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, I don't know, how does this happen where people have jobs and then they have fake jobs? Like, right, it's like I'm watching Entourage and it's like all the agents are going to leave with Ari, but then like the boss finds out and then they have to stay. It's like to leave a company, it's like you can't be working for this fake company while also being employed at the real company. You either have to move or, or not. Or like if you are, it's like an intermittent period where you're just like phasing out. So it should be over soon. But if, it's, if they intend to still work for two companies, you need to speak up, I, I think, especially because you know. You don't need to tell like the people who are going to work for Aunt Linda because like you don't need to be like really that much of a traitor to yeah. your family. But just tell the person who needs to know, the person who can handle this, 
and yeah. have them do it so that you're not doing it from your compromised position. Your priority is your main job. So I would forego the $600, like you're never going to get it. Yeah, it's forgo, forgo at Linda's company. Just focus on your real job and how you can best benefit that because that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, and tell the person in charge who is not connected to Aunt Linda. Wow, she's giving Ants a bad name. Totally. That hurts. I really want to move on to our third and final um, Dear Toasters because it's, it's quite interesting. Ooh. It's called, Does My Husband Have a Trust Fund? Ooh. And the picture from the Gmail has a picture of assumingly like, the scroll on her husband. And, like, oh, can I see? Yeah. Sometimes like it. Oh, it's like really small. Yeah. You can't see. They look cute. But anyone looks cute. <sighs> Just want to say I'm a new toaster. I'm loving it. I've stopped taking phone calls from my friends on the work commute so that I can finish listening before I get to where I'm going, which is sweet. Anyway, long story short, my husband's grandpa was apparently really rich and had all this money put away for his grandkids. Yay me. <laughs> but then when he died, my husband's evil step-grandma like, cut everyone out of the will. I don't know how it works, but basically there isn't any money at all left. That's all the background info. Here's the problem. Sounds like an episode of American Greed. Immediately after I got married, my new father-in-law and I had a big fight. He was our realtor and I felt he super cheated on the money he was charging. So one weekend, my father-in-law went out of town and asked my husband and I to dog sit. Well, my husband went golfing, so I went to go and let the dog... So I... Wait. My husband went golfing, so I went to go and let the dog out with my mom. Okay, so her and her mom went to the dad's house. To let the dog out. Yeah. Okay. My mom and I started snooping in my father-in-law's office to see what exactly he made on the sale of my old house and purchasing of the new one. While snooping, okay, that's fair. She had good, like, she did feel he was sneaky. So it's not like she went looking for the trust fund, you know? No, she, she wasn't just looking for anything. She was looking for something specific, but still, like... That's technically in a court of law, like you acquire this information illegally. It doesn't count. While snooping, I found a letter from my husband's grandpa's attorney. It was addressed to my husband and it said that there was a trust set up for him, blah, blah, blah. I freaked out and didn't know what to do and got nervous, so I shoved it back in the file folder I got it from. Why does my father-in-law have that in a secret spot? What does the letter say? It's, it's the grandpa's attorney, the rich grandpa who died. It says it's written to the grandson, her husband. There is a trust set up for you. Okay. It's very black and white. Okay. Why does my father-in-law have that in a secret spot? Why doesn't my husband know about it? I told him I saw it when I got home. Oh, good. Okay. My husband can't tell his father that I was snooping through his commission folders and stumbled upon it. Do I dig further? Do I just wish this is true? Do I get my hopes up for nothing? Not a gold digger, but could be digging. Okay. Well, I was going to say, you have to tell your husband immediately. Right. But she did. She did. Okay. So I think here, you tell your husband, your husband's allowed to go through his dad's things. Yeah. Yeah. So you tell your husband to go, you're, he's looking for something business related and he finds the letter and then your husband takes it to his dad. I was going to say like maybe your husband knows and like isn't telling you, but the fact that you, right. I'm like, cause like that's, you know, these I thought that families, was going to be the issue. Me too. Itchu. <laughs> so now that he knows, no, this is unethical now. It's like his son is being cheated out of his trust fund. This, now it's the son's problem. You did your due diligence as a wife. A wife's job is to shove a man in the back and push him forward. You just got to get him to where he needs to go and tell him what to say. Now it's his responsibility. It's like in New Jersey. The man is the head, but the right. wife is the neck. You can't, you can't come out swinging and be like, I found this letter. But your husband sure can. Yeah, your husband sure can, sure should. And then you take it from there. And you know also, what? note for next time, just take a picture of the letter, just so you have proof, because he could destroy it. Yeah, know? the letter. But the they have the upper hand right now, which is that the father-in-law is in the dark. Right. I would get a picture of it and just start talking. Yes. Yeah, send send your hubs in there. It's just weird. Tell like, him exactly where Like, this where guy's it so is. shady, he just, like, leaves this letter on his desk when his daughter's coming over, you know? No, it was in his files. She was going through his files. I know. It just seems like... If you're a guy with files, like you just don't have like that one piece of paper just like lying right. in the file. Right, and if it's like the one piece of paper that's like in a incriminating, paper, it's not just in your desk. Like it's in like a safe, you know, behind a photo. This is like an episode of SVU where like the father like definitely kills the son, and then like it's all because of this, you know? You think so? But I don't want that to happen. I'm just saying it sounds like a narrative. I don't know. These don't sound like murderous people. Just greedy people. Yeah, or maybe the husband circumvents the father, find out who the, the grandpa's lawyer was, and take care of business. You don't need the dad. Yeah. But now it makes me think, why would the grandfather leave the money to the grandson and not the grandfather's son? He's like skipped a generation. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what the dad is singing. That's why he's pissy. He's keeping right. It. Like some of the, well, the dad sounds like a shady guy. Maybe the, the, the granddad knew and didn't want to give it to him. Right. Oh, this Just, sounds like, honestly, an episode of like a Hallmark movie. No. Yeah, the, the, the royal, the princess. A Hallmark movie that Lori Loughlin, unfortunately, will not be starring in. No, but the one, the Netflix Hallmark movie, Royal Christmas, where he finds, like, the letter that he's the heir to the throne. Even a though Christmas he prince? Is, yes, a Christmas prince, even though he is adopted. But the, oh, well. the, and the dad wrote literally just a letter that said, he's my heir. Well, from that Melissa McCarthy movie, um, Could You Ever Forgive Me, we know that letters like that can easily be falsified. 
This is true. We didn't even talk about that movie. We talked. We said There's that we watched it. There's literally nothing to say. It was just like a horrible movie about a, a, a bad person and a sad person and a, a story not worth telling. Yeah. I've watched even the three episodes of American Greed that I watched would be better stories. Someone made a great point. Did the girl ever find out about him cashing in on the sale of her house? Like, oh right. What so you came there shady? for? Is he shady? Like, did you find what you came there for? I would like an update on this story immediately. 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 <sighs> okay. I feel like I want to go for another 15 minutes, like just so we can say we did three 90-minute shows in a row, but this is 75, no, and but that I mean, still counts. I, mean, I know you, do you want to talk about Project Runway? Well, I want you to watch it. I would love to hear your thoughts. Oh, oh, oh. But I oh, stopped oh. watching it because of the corruption. Oh, yeah. Well, so. When because I, justice for Cha-Cha. Justice for Cha-Cha, and also just like justice, I just find that like what Nina Garcia considers to be like the most beautiful, like nine times out of 10, isn't what I agree with. How's Carly Kloss? She's pretty good. She was really cute on Watch What Happens Live. She's doing a good job. Like, she's really understanding her place and that, like, this is, she said it a million times on Watch What Happens Live. Like, this is Heidi and Tim's baby. Like, we're not trying to step on their feet. And they've been really gracious with us. They thought their time was up and they, like, sent us flowers. Like, they made it seem like it was really amicable that, like, she's not coming for Heidi Klum. And, like, she, yeah. when, they, when she sent someone home, I was so glad she didn't say, Avi uh, Zayn. Right. What did she say? Thank you. You may not leave the runway. Oh, she doesn't have, like, a catchphrase? No, and I, I think and that's can, good. You can take a Carly's cookie on the way out. Yeah, please. Code yourself out of here. <laughs> um, here are my thoughts. Wait, so... Um, Is there anyone who's, like, talented and exciting? Yes. COVID. He's Indian. He's so cute. His model, he was um, tailoring her, and he didn't realize that she was transgender, and she was like, I'm so... The model was like, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm the first ever transgender model on um, Project, Project Runway. Runway. And he literally was like, gonna cry. He's like, you don't understand. Like, I grew up in India. Me and my boyfriend, like, the people call the, the uh, our neighbors call the police on us. Like, I totally get what you're going through. And it was just like this amazing moment. And his, he had the most stunning dress. He didn't make top three. And I saw all these ugly, uh, the other ugly outfits there, like, with the feathers. I couldn't believe it. And there were two other outfits. So the annoying part of the episode is like, there's so many people in the beginning. So it's like 15 contestants. You it's can't like really, bachelor. you can't highlight on everyone. So they chose specific people, specifically two people who were literally like couldn't sew if their life depended on. Like there were two girls and Jackie, one of the girls we know. You told me. We went to dinner with a couple girls from The Bachelor and they invited some of their friends and there was this girl there, Kavanaugh, I remember her. And then I'm looking at her and she's on Project One Way. Obviously she was the one who got sent home. No. Yeah. But to be honest, like, so there were two girls at the very bottom. Kavanaugh like made something that was just plain. Like it looked like Forever 21 crop top, black crop top skirt. I mean, black skirt, pencil skirt, when it like, it was supposed to be inspired by Brandon Maxwell's mom. Like it was this whole thing. Um, so technically she, she made a dress, like she stitched it. That was it. fine. It was just commercial ugliness. It was a lack of style and vision. The other girl, they gave everyone's dimensions. The other girl made a bodysuit for a girl that was like a foot shorter than the girl that she ended up getting. And this girl was really priding herself. She was like, there's so many designers here who don't know how to you know, design for curvy women. And she got a curvy model. They drew out of a hat and this girl got one. So like she had an upper hand. She fucked up the dimensions. Not only was her thing so ugly, even if it had turned out right, there was no way it could have been cute. She, she was touching it while they were evaluating it and a piece fell off. Well, that makes sense because they're made in 24 hours. Like two, They had two days. Okay, but still, like, it doesn't... But everyone else did it. That's what I'm saying. It's like, so not only was it ugly, it also was not structurally sound. She didn't know how to, like, fit a model. There was a, It seemed like that, but she got to stay over Kavanaugh. I kind of understand that because as a designer, like, it's hard. I mean, not that I'm a designer whatsoever, but uh, doing a Forever 21 outfit, I think, is more egregious than taking a chance, doing something crazy. No, but the chance was also a Forever, Forever 21 bodysuit with, like, little stripes on it. It looked like a bathing suit actually from Target. It was horrible. Wow. I just thought it was interesting that they got to send Maybe her home. Maybe they just didn't want to send home someone who dressed a curvy model because then they, like... Maybe. If, they're, if they both had the same issues and it's like, well, she had, uh, you know, they don't want it to be the issue of, I agree. of the model. But so it seemed, I mean, that girl Kavanaugh, like, she seemed like fine, but she was definitely saying a lot of things. She was so obnoxious. Like, Ben was dying because they sleep in twin beds. And she was like, I haven't slept in a twin bed since I was in Europe when the twin beds are pushed together to make a king. And Ben was like dying. She was very snotty. And like the, the group loves the girl with the blue bodysuit, like the girl who fucked up, who actually got saved. Like the group loved her. When, when she came in as the girl who won, like everyone was screaming. Nobody really liked the other girl. So it was like a happy ending, I guess. Um, okay, maybe I will watch it. It just was really frustrating the last season that I watched because Cha Cha got sent home week one and he was the only designer that I was excited about. And while I'm excited that they're diversifying their models and I think it's really important, it also became a reality show about the models and their stories and their personalities. Also, it is 
And it's how almost, the models felt about the clothes. I, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Oh, well, Kavanaugh, like she was running so behind, she had the models start sewing. Like she really, they were both, they both, neither of them were gonna win, so it but doesn't matter. But the show matter. is like, where the last time I watched it, it was becoming equally about the models as it was about the designers. And I, I would watch America's Next Top Model if I'm interested in a model story. But so, something that I feel like is really unfair is that they get different models. So like someone has a plus size model, someone has um, just like an average normal build size model, someone has a super tall. And it is really hard to make clothes for different sizes and some people specialize in skinny girl clothes and some people specialize in normal clothes. So it's almost a not a level playing field. I, I agree with that. I do. Like, I think, I just wish they would have all normal looking models. Like, not fucking anorexic, tiny, like you could see their bones. And just like average okay. size girls with boobs and curves. Like, the, like Barbara Pelvin. Like a fit model. Yeah, and, like, it, it or, is. Or, no, it's like they either should all be too skinny, they should all be average, they should all be curvy, like, but the, the playing field should be the same. I couldn't agree more. It's, it's not, it's because it's not equal. And that's also not how the fashion industry works. You design something for a certain fit and then you make different sizes of it. Like, I don't think they're, they're there to prove their creativity and their craft. They're not, like, it's just another wrench to throw in on already very difficult And they have more wrenches. Now they're adding like social media so everyone has to photograph their things, which I actually thought was really that is cool. Cute. And except the girl Kevin, I was like, oh my God, for my brand, we only use a real photographer. I'm never using an iPhone. Well, and then, then she, your brand's going to suffer. Yeah, she was just really snotty. Um, but I really like, and then it, they put all them on the Instagram and then people are going to vote and the winner gets to be sold on bravotv.com, like their outfit. Oh, I love that because sometimes there are things that I want to buy. There was a girl. The girl who won, oh my God, her, I like she, like I feel like just based on that, like she has to win the whole thing. Like she was, she, and they didn't show her, the girl who won the, the actual challenge, they didn't show her working at her station for one second. Because she's probably like just not that interesting. It's so annoying that we only get to see she like the people the clothes, who suck. For, well, they always uh, do film mostly the people who are going home to like explain why they're going home. Um, there was a girl who won Project Runway. I think it was like three seasons ago. Her name was Erin, and it was like she was straight out of design school. I remember her. She was just like maybe 22, 23, and she just had the best clothes. And it's like, where can I buy her clothes now? It's like, where is she? Christian Seriano, who's the He's cutest. the Tim Gunn. He's Tim Gunn. Yeah, you know, I thought it was weird that he's, because he's not a judge, he's a mentor, but Brendan Maxwell is a judge. And I feel like between the two designers, like they're pretty equal. Like I thought it was just weird. I was saying maybe even Christian Seriano is more well known than well, Brendan Maxwell. Then maybe it's just based on their personalities. Like Elaine Christian Welteroth, Seriano can go into the room and pump people up, yes. whereas Brendan Maxwell can just judge. Elaine Welteroth, who was former editor of Teen Vogue, I'm obsessed with her. She had the most insightful insight. Like everything she said, I'm like, you're right. That does look like, like she, everything she okay, was I'm really- Okay, I'm gonna watch it now. This it's is a good, good. Yeah, I love that it's back on Bravo. It's like they're trying a little too hard to have their foot in everything. I can't explain it, but it's good. And um, there's some real talent, talent there. I'm keeping my eye, eye out for COVID. Cool. I like the aspect of the social media part where it's like, does it, cause that is what fashion is. And you some of them took really, and it's all and in then, Brooklyn. So they were taking interesting photos. No, that's cool. That's very important. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Well, great. I caught up on Riverdale last night. Very spooky stuff. I don't watch it. I'm just, I really don't have time. I just, I love it. Oh my God. And Luke Perry was on the episode. And of the three episodes I watched, she was only really in one scene of one. And it felt like seeing a ghost. Like, right. And what he was saying was so ominous. Cryptic. And it really, like, Zach and I were really shook. I'm shook. Anyways. I have a lunch meeting I got to get to. Yeah. Um, I love lunch meetings. Um, that's all we got. Have an amazing weekend. I'll see a bunch of you Bostines at Foxwoods. There's a few tickets left. We're at like 94% sold. So like if you want to come grab a ticket, we're going to be spending the weekend there, hitting the casino tables, hitting the club. It's going to be a good time. We're taking a limousine there. I'm really excited. Um, oh, we are taking a limo? Um, I'm still working on it, but like oh. I'm just telling everyone it's a limo. So like thanks for blowing out my spot. Oh, sorry. Um, I thanks just needed to make sure I got a seat going forward. Thanks for listening to The Morning Toast, The Millennial Morning Show. We go live Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. We're also available available as a podcast anywhere you can listen to podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, radio, all that shit. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for being a toaster. And we'll we'll see you on Monday. You, I'm not here. I have jury duty. Oh, we got, oh, I got to get a co-host. Okay. Yeah. There's Point a Sky. chance I'll be here on Tuesday. The Point Sky's already on Tuesday, so we don't need you. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be serving my country.